Sige, have with us the Toyota Yaris Cross. Let's do a review. The Toyota Yaris Cross was introduced in the Philippines last year, slotting between the Rays and the Corolla Cross. Unlike the Yaris Cross seen in Japan and other markets, this is built on the DNGA platform by Daihatsu. Quick to gaining popularity, we try to find out why. This one we have here is the 2024 Toyota Yaris Cross 1.5V CVT, the mid variant, and it's priced at 1,296,000 Philippine pesos. The Yaris Cross is in no doubt a good looking crossover, looking like and combining styling cues from other Toyota models. The front fascia reminds us of the American Highlander, it's aggressive with large creases and sharp angles. The front grille then reminds us of the Corolla Cross. The headlights are full LED and the turn signals do a heartbeat effect similar to Mazda. We also get LED fog lights and front parking sensors. The side is a bit cleaner looking with softer lines. You'll notice the black roof and this variant rides on 18-inch two-tone alloy wheels wrapped in Bridgestone Toranza tires. Whichever angle you look at it, it looks good and that's the case at the back. Here, it shows its baby RAV4 look with the full LED taillights which also remind us a bit of the Lexus NX. Open the power tailgate and it will reveal your usual amount of space for a crossover. It's actually larger than many of its Chinese rivals and similar to the Honda HR-V. Let's just say that you can fit about 3 to 4 pieces of luggage over here. And now we're inside the Toyota Yaris Cross 1.5V. This is gonna be very similar as the S Hybrid when it comes to what you see here and what you get. So first materials are the same so we have that hard touch plastic on the dashboard. This does feel pretty solid but there are a few panel gaps over here and there are some sharp edges here on this portion and this part over here in front of the driver does feel a bit cheap. Then we have that layered design which I already mentioned before as well. So this part here is soft touch. Leather does feel pretty nice. It has this blue piping over here which also just makes it look a bit different than hard touch plastic again down here. So basically the overall design here is very similar to the Toyota Rays and other Daihatsu based Toyota products. And here in the door panel, soft touch again, very nice feeling door panel. So that's soft on top. This faux leather over here and some hard touch plastic here in the lower portion. But yeah, overall the build quality is pretty average. There are some parts that are not so good. There are parts that are good. And then we have this leather wrap steering wheel. I believe all variants get a leather wrap steering wheel and it does look pretty good. It feels nice as well and the leather material used doesn't feel cheap at all. Then on the left we have our controls for our trip computer, audio controls, volume was over there. We also have our 360 cam button. We'll get to that in just a bit. Then on the right our controls for our adaptive cruise control lane departure warning. So this does have the full suite of Toyota safety sense as well just like the hybrid. Then also here additional audio controls in our drive mode select. So the only thing about the steering wheel is that it is adjustable for tilt and telescopic functions but there is very limited adjustment so there's really not much you can do. So for people with short arms just like me, I will find myself with stretched arms at times. Then the horn here is just your typical Toyota horn, so that does sound pretty nice. So that's the usual Toyota horn over there. And then for our instrument cluster, we do have a half digital instrument cluster. It's a 7-inch screen on the left and on the right, our digital speedometer. So anyway, the screen does show a decent amount of information. It's your typical trip computer in every vehicle. We have our fuel economy and it's also customizable. And also, I'd like to add that you can also change the sound of the turn signals here, depending on your preference. And here in the middle, we have a 10.1 inch touchscreen infotainment system. This is the same basically as what you would find in the Rays, but this is a bit different as well because it's a lot more responsive and the graphics do seem slightly better, although it's still not the best, but it is better. It also has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can see that over there. It does look pretty good when in Apple CarPlay. Now it really looks like an iPad. And also here in the left, we have some shortcut buttons, touch sensitive, also the volume is over there. I do wish that we still had physical buttons and knobs just like what we'd find in Honda vehicles, but yeah, this will do at least, they do still put that there. Also, you'll see up here, we have a built-in dash cam. So the vehicle already comes with a dashboard camera as standard. You don't need to buy another one. Then moving down, we have our single zone automatic climate control. It's the same thing that you will see in the Toyota Rays as well. So knobs, buttons, a small display, all very nice. Then moving down, we have our push start button. 
two USB ports, one USB A and one USB C, and our wireless phone charger, which actually clamps your phone in place. So that's also really nice again. And I did forget to mention that we have this thing over here, which it's kind of a design thing by Toyota, but doesn't feel very nice. The material is all hard touch and it's very hollow and just feels cheap. It just it actually moves a lot and creaks a lot. So that's very unfortunate. But at least on this side, on the left, Toyota did put some soft touch leather over here where your knee would usually hit. So that's very thoughtful on their part. Then our gear shifter here, traditional gear shifter with manual mode. And I do find it annoying that like in other Toyotas that if you put it in reverse, you have that beeping sound, which it just sounds very annoying. But anyway, if you do put it in reverse, we do see our 360 cam over there. It's not the best in terms of graphics. It's very crunchy. It's very old school. It's very, it's just really bad, the quality of this 360 camera, but it does work. So it's still very helpful. It shows you different views as well, depending on what you need when you press the button on the steering wheel. So. That's still much appreciated. And then going back to our center console, we have our electronic parking brake with auto hold function. And then over here, we have two cup holders or even bottle holders. So this actually fits my water bottle pretty well. So I can fit two of that actually. And if you need it to be smaller, you can just move the cup holders over here, make it smaller, it's adjustable. That's very nice to have. This is a rare feature today. So yeah, that's much appreciated, but I do wish that there was a cover here so that we can at least make it look cleaner when this spot here is not in use. Then here, our center armrest with storage underneath. I have a mess over there and this cover is a bit flimsy, so I think they should really improve that. And then our seats. So we have our full leather seats over here. We have blue stitching here in front, it which matches the blue piping I showed you earlier. And then the seat itself is pretty fine it's decent it's not the most comfortable honestly but it is fairly supportive in terms of its side bolstering because we do have pretty large bolstering on the side but yeah again it's not that comfortable you will find yourself your back aching after a bit of a drive because it's very flat the seat bottom is flat the seat back is flat there isn't much support in terms of that but at least this driver's seat is also power adjustable so it's easier to find a proper driving position and a comfortable one as well and now we're at the back of the Yaris Cross V. So again, it's pretty much the same as what you'd find in the S hybrid, but we are lacking here the glass roof. So this one no longer comes with that. That's exclusive to the hybrid. This one still gets the other stuff though. So we have our two air vents over there and two USB ports down there. Then the seats, they're pretty much the same in terms of support. So they're not very supportive. They're not very comfortable, but what I do like is that they are quite soft. So at least in terms of that that's a good thing but again pretty flat then we have here our center armrest with two cup holders so that's also nice to have over here then materials here at the back are also pretty much the same as in front thankfully so they didn't downgrade we have soft touch plastics on top of the dashboard again that faux leather and that hard touch plastic here with the textured design so yeah pretty much the same and then in terms of space it is pretty good as well here so it's not as big as the, the honda hrv but yeah pretty good so we have decent amounts of foot room knee room is plenty full leg room pretty good so i have more than enough for me over here three passengers will be a bit tight over here but yeah i think it will work better than compared to a nissan kicks although again this is not gonna be as comfortable as the Honda HRV and the Nissan Kicks as well. And now we're driving the Toyota Yaris Cross 1.5 V. And this is not my first time to drive the Yaris Cross because I've driven the hybrid before. But this specific variant, it's my first time to try it out. And so far from what I can say from what I've experienced so far in the past couple of days is that this car unfortunately does not drive the way it looks. So we'll dive deeper into why in just a bit but first let's talk about what's underneath the hood so this is powered by a 1.5 liter four-cylinder gasoline engine that produces 106 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque paired to a cvt and if that sounds familiar to you that's because it shares the same engine with the toyota rush toyota vios toyota veloz avanza pretty much every other toyota that is in this price brackets and i will say that despite it sounding underpowered well it is but it does not feel that way as long as you're not pushing the car hard it's actually quite decent 
as long as you're not pushing it hard so like right now we're driving about 20 kilometers per hour and yeah it feels pretty decent the engine is very responsive the transmission is okay but we'll get to that in just a bit again so response is pretty good because this is naturally aspirated and that's what i like about naturally aspirated engines they are very responsive there is no delay as soon as you put your foot on the pedal it will respond immediately but what i do think is one of the downsides of this powertrain combination is the cvt because i usually like cvts actually if you watched my other reviews you'll know that i am not a hater of cvts despite most people hating them i really like cvts because they're usually smooth and they just make the drive much much smoother and that's what i'm looking for usually but in this case the cvt here does feel quite jerky it's actually my first time to encounter a jerky cvt and i'm not used to that most cvts i've driven are pretty okay some are delayed some are pretty responsive but this one is just the complete opposite of smoothness put it in sport mode though, or what they call here power mode it will become a bit smoother and the car will even become peppier just don't use eco mode because in eco mode this car feels very anemic especially when you want to merge onto the expressway onto the highway you will feel that the car is having difficulty with that that's why if you're looking for the better power delivery if you're looking for all the torque you will probably want to look at the nissan kicks or the honda hrv both the turbo and the non-turbo variants you maybe you'll probably want to choose those instead of this but overall if you're just staying inside the city this might be okay another thing is the steering of this car because it just feels kind of weird it's actually very light which most buyers will prefer and and i'll admit that if you're driving inside the city it's very smooth it's very light but what i do find problematic here is that it's not consistent in its weight so there are times that it feels heavy there are times that it's very light and there are times that it's extremely light so i check the tires they're okay so it's not that so i just don't know why it's like that here and the feedback is pretty much non-existent so i did find myself having to make corrections especially when turning in tighter corners inside the city tighter streets i did find myself having to make several connect corrections because the wheels were not pointed where i expected them to be but then again if you're just driving inside the city then i think it will be okay another thing that i'll have to comment about is nvh insulation or perhaps the lack thereof because road noise in this car is just pretty loud at around 60 kilometers per hour and even inside the city you will be getting a lot of road noise then same goes with wind noise so that does get quite loud at 80 kilometers per hour but thankfully both of them are not that disturbing and they won't really bother you while you're driving what does bother me while driving is refinement because the engine is just really loud and it doesn't feel the smoothest as well the way it sounds you can really tell that you're using up all that 106 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque you can feel that the car is really making the most out of it because you don't really have that much what i will say though that that's nice about this car is the suspension so ride quality is actually pretty good it's a bit firmer compared to the nissan kicks and on the hrv but it's still pretty good as it is so it does soak up the road imperfections pretty well and you won't find yourself with a too soft suspension or nor a too firm suspension it's just right visibility in this car is also pretty good because we do have pretty wide windows and both front and rear windshield but the a pillar here does feel a bit large for this vehicle but it's fine it doesn't really bother me that much and we also have blind spot monitoring so if there's ever anything in your blind spot you won't have any difficulty avoiding that because the car will already tell you from the get-go overall like i said this car does not look the way it drives so we have the very good looking exterior the interior is really good looking as well but the driving could definitely be different so i was hoping that we'd get here a much more comfortable drive a much quieter ride but unfortunately that's not what we get here especially with the daihatsu platform but let's go back to talking about something positive because that's the fuel economy of this vehicle despite you having to push hard to get all the power to be to keep yourself in pace with other vehicles on the road you still get excellent fuel economy in this car so on the highway i was able to achieve 23 kilometers per liter which is already pretty good almost hybrid levels in terms of highway driving although it's still pretty far from what you'd get 
in the hybrid version of this or even the non-turbocharged version of the Honda HRV, it's still excellent. Then inside the city, we're able to achieve around 12 kilometers per liter in decent conditions. So in very, very, very heavy traffic conditions, I was able to get only 7 kilometers per liter. But the traffic was really bad then. So yeah. And then moving on, this also has the full suite of Toyota Safety Sense. Although it's probably Daihatsu based here because it's not the smoothest in its operation but given the price of this car i guess there's really nothing to complain when it comes to those features because it does give you every single thing so it has adaptive cruise control which does work pretty well it has lane departure warning autonomous emergency braking it has everything that you can ask for when it comes to advanced driver assistance technology so at its price that is already very much appreciated. Based on our experience, the Toyota Yaris Cross is able to prove why it's selling so well, especially this mid-V variant in a market that prioritizes looks, fuel economy, and features, as well as bragging rights for having an SUV above all else, this definitely delivers. If you can stomach its cheaper feeling interior and not so good on-road experience, then you're all good with this. If you do want something that ticks all the right boxes, you're better off going for its rivals. Still, this is not a bad choice.